Old CPUs are making a resurgence. Meta is surging themselves on the Steam Deck and the next X3D CPUs are gonna surge up with extra power. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, December 24th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today discussing how AM4 CPUs are just absolutely surging in the charts in multiple different sectors across the world. Obviously, because of the RAM issues and storage issues that are going around, people are opting for not upgrading platforms where they will have to potentially switch over to DDR4 Five, but instead opting to keep their same motherboard, same DDR4, and just doing same socket upgrades. And it looks like in places like the UK, the top selling CPU ends up being the Ryzen 7 5800X, beating out the 9800X and the 7800X 3D. Then over in Germany with Mine Factories reporting, it's not quite the same, but the 57 and 5800X are two of the top five selling CPUs, as well as the 5950X being in the top, as well as the 5500 and 5600 resurging. It looks like people are going over to that. And then on the Amazon in the US, it looks like the 5800 XT takes the fourth spot and then the 5500 takes the fifth spot with the 3600 actually being number six. So it looks like people are just choosing to stay where they're at and making sure that they are not stymied by the current RAM situation, that they are just taking what they already have, making the best case scenario of it. We've already discussed this, that that was kind of a hope that people were having that AMD would potentially bring back the 5800 X3D just because it's going to be the best option for a while, even if it's more expensive, because the entire platform upgrade cost is just going to be out of the park for most people. And so AMD is going to have fewer sales, but not potentially if they just offer yet another AM4 option. With CES coming up, they could potentially announce <laughs> 2026 continued support for AM4 with this new CPU that we're launching or an old one being brought back or potentially a region exclusive one like the 5500X3D making a worldwide release where it can be sold elsewise and that could be you know a cheaper more affordable alternative as opposed to getting the Ryzen 7 you still get a Ryzen 5 and the X3D Vcash just helping to make sure that you can actually game a little bit better so hopefully people aren't going to have as bad of a time in 2026 if there are more options on on older platforms. We'll see if that plays out. And you might be on an old platform for your smell. In case you are, you should check out today's video sponsor. You know the best gift you can give your family this holiday season? Smelling good when you're back in town for the celebrations. Make sure you pack your delicious scents from today's sponsor, Scentbird, when you're making the trek home. Scentbird is perfect for travel because every scent comes in a convenient travel case, perfect for slipping into a side pocket of your bag or even your own pants pocket. They even have some fancy pants cases if you want to show off a little. Now, if you'll allow me, I'm going to show off everything Scentbird hooked us up with this month. Starting off, we have the Zephyrine from Liberty Beauty with notes of fig, vetiver, and suede. This is a full-bodied, rich, and sweet scent that finishes with a floral touch of rose centifolia and a woody touch of cedar wood. Perfect for sitting down for a holiday meal with the family. Got that Yule log going? Mm. Next, we have Sugarful Noir from Michel Germain. This well-rounded scent starts with a citrusy punch from grapefruit and moves to a rich and sweet mix of dark chocolate and lavender. Finishing with an earthy sweetness of sandalwood and vanilla. The complexity of this scent makes it a great choice for everyday wear that has the makings of a signature scent for whoever wears it. In the middle of the pack, we have Misfit by Arquis. This musky and floral scent is filled to the brim with French inspiration. Starting off with Calabrian bergamot and French lavender, this scent offers crisp and floral top notes, being supported with notes of Styrax, patchouli, and tonka bean for an added mix of more florals and musk. The result is something light and inviting, perfect for a daytime wearer hunting down the paintress. Get it? because it's French. Anyways, last up, we have the Black Iris from Borsalino. Coming in strong with another very floral scent, Black Iris begins with bergamot and cardamom for some warmth, followed with iris and cedarwood middle notes that back up the floral start with some earthiness from the cedarwood. Finishing with musky notes of amberwood make this feel like a timeless scent. This classic inspired scent is another great choice for everyday wear, whether that's around the office or out with friends for the evening. These four scents are just barely scratching the surface of the over 900 fragrances you can choose from with Scentbird. Taking their scent quiz can help you narrow down what you're looking for or encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and experience something new. With a first month of only $9, Scentbird is the perfect way to try new fragrances without committing to a full-size bottle. And with a new scent coming each month, you can avoid the dreaded nose blindness for both you and the folks you see every day. If you're interested in trying Scentbird, scan the QR code or use the link below. And with my coupon code UFDTech2, you'll get 55% off at Scentbird. Plus, you'll get free delivery to your 
your door and a free case. You'll get the product for half of the price, and that's just $9. It's a steal. Big thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Well, it looks like AMD's support for RAM is going to smell a little bit better with the latest Expo V 1.2 update announcing that they're going to have better memory overclocking profiles and that finally AMD is going to have official support for the CU DIMM RAM sticks, the QDIMM, which have integrated circuits that allow them to clock way higher than other RAM kits. Intel's had this for quite many moon at this point, but now officially it should be rolling out to AMD stuff. And Meta decided to roll out Steam Deck at least software to their server hardware with them putting out this little discussion about how they found out that the scheduler on the Steam Deck for the CPU was better than anything out there and better than anything that they were developing. So they just took it and revamped it for server architecture. So they have a presentation about how do we make a Steam Deck scheduler work on larger servers. And Valve developed this so that the Steam Deck was good at playing video games. It wasn't gonna stutter or drop frames or anything like that. And then Meta took that and had some challenges with scaling it up to larger core counts and trying to figure out how to schedule different priorities when you're dealing with that many CPU cores that the Steam Deck doesn't deal with. But the basic underlying architecture that they're modifying was based on Valve's design rather than something that they developed in-house. And whether or not this is a net good for the world, net positive, net negative, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about how engineering wise, this is pretty cool, even if you might disagree with, you know, Facebook, Meta, WhatsApp, all getting better because of the Steam Deck existing in the world. But it does seem like the Steam Deck has had an outstanding impact besides just in the video game community, thanks to a lot of the different things that it's capable of. And Reese is capable of a lot of things, but saving you money is his primary thing right now. Hey, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It is a day two of my plumbing problems. No, this is not a euphemism of any kind, but I hope you guys are enjoying your holiday time and I hope you're ready for some holiday savings. Starting us off, we have this KTC 24 inch 1080p 190 hertz fast IPS gaming monitor going for $82.99 with included promo code, making it $37 off. But then next up, we have the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 CPU air cooler going for $89.90, making it $35 off. And then lastly, we have this Acer Swift 16 AI 16 inch 3K 120 hertz OLED touchscreen laptop featuring an Intel Core Ultra 7 Series 2 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD, which you can pick up for only $649.99, making it $600 off. This seems like a phenomenal work laptop, but I will have to say, am I in the minority here where I don't like touchscreen laptops? It seems like a fingerprint magnet. I don't want that. But hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, we started out that you can get a good deal on a partly built PC with Main Gear announcing a new program where they're not going to sell you the RAM directly. Now, this is not the first time we're hearing about a pre-built company making it so they're not supplying the RAM, but Main Gear is doing it in a different way with them announcing the BYO RAM program, bring your own, where instead of them selling it to you with no RAM in it, you instead ship them your RAM that you already have, and then they plug it into the system and do all of the testing and configuration to make sure that it's safe and stable and working properly. Now, there's a million different variables that get introduced with this. When it comes to shipping, they're saying that they're providing a prepaid shipping label. How much insurance is on that? Does it vary based on the capacity of what you're sending in? Because if you send in a 96 gig kit that you already have, that's a thousand dollars that's on the line that could potentially get easily broken in the shipping process. And how do you prove to main gear that your RAM was working beforehand if you don't have a system and then when they have it they say that the RAM doesn't work how does that logistically happen and they say compatibility wise it could be new used pulled from a current build or sourced from retail eBay friends or family as long as it's compatible DDR5 it doesn't matter but the question is what are they determining to be compatible they do have like this supported RAM list for various different motherboards I don't think it has to be according to that standard but what happens if they can't get a system stable on that RAM but it was stable on your computer or you know it's not hitting the recommended rated speeds. What is the protocol in that scenario? They say if they spot any issues, they'll provide alternative options and return your kit with your PC. It's a weird situation. I get why they're doing it, but it also unlocks a lot of problems and logistical challenges as well. But I do think it's preferable to the alternative of other PC companies who have announced that they're just shutting down. They're just, they're, they'll be back when there's RAM 
they'll sell you stuff in 2026. Sorry about that, you're just gonna have to wait. And we're gonna have to wait for the next generation of Zen 6 CPUs, which if we follow AMD's naming scheme for what they currently have, should be the Ryzen 11,000 CPUs. And we're getting new details about that, especially since it's supposed to go toe to toe with the upcoming Intel Novolate processors, which are being reported that they have the 144, 288 megabytes of L3 cache, or as Intel will be calling it, the BLLC or big last level cache. This will allow them to unlock a lot of extra gaming performance that they've potentially been leaving on the table. But AMD not wanting to be left behind potentially for performance reasons or even just for marketing reasons. A well-known leaker is reporting that for Zen 6, we could potentially be seeing 144 megabytes on things like the Ryzen 7 11800X 3D and then 288 megabytes on something like the Ryzen 11950X 3D, the ones that have dual CCD vCache on them. Now, it's not quite clear if this is gonna have extra benefit for AMD. We don't know at what point does the amount of L3 cash stop scaling with game performance. Maybe this is only going to provide marginal benefit over what they were originally planning. And this could just purely be a marketing move where they say that they have the equal amounts to Intel. Hopefully Intel's implementation does allow them to get extra gaming performance outside of, you know, beating the ones that don't have their BLLC. But AMD has the refined platform. They're the ones who we already have a lot of data on. Intel's the newcomer in the space where they have to prove themselves with this technology. I'm really curious to see how it plays out. And it's very, very interesting how things have just swept swapped in a decade with Intel just it used to be on top with Skylake and KB Lake, the 6700K, 7700K back in the day. And now it's the exact opposite. Intel's got to prove themselves to the customer yet again, because they lost all of that. And you guys didn't lose me. I've read your comments from yesterday's episode of Hot News. So let me read them out loud back to you. Top comment says, this geezer has been in the IT world as a programmer since 1979 and enjoys your channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Saying I wrote my first game in 1982, Star Traders, and have recently taught myself Python four years ago. And I'm up updating the old games to new standards and adding a few new features to make it more informative and fun. Never quit learning. I'm nearly 79 now, but I will never quit programming. Onward. That's awesome. Also, you doubled up on 79, started in 1979, you are 79, it's fun, fun numbers. I don't think I've heard of your game Star Traders, but if there's a way that like the community can engage with it, we could just check it out. You know, feel free to leave another comment we can see, or it could just be like a personal hobby project that you're working on, which is also totally fine. Then we got 29 Alpha saying, I feel like if you're upset that your business model is affected by people not wanting to be spied on, you might have a bad business model. But but that's how the economy works right now. If we don't know what you're doing at every moment, how do we sell you things? If we don't know every minutia about your entire life, how do we target you with this beauty cream? I hear you. You know, unlike the business hand, it makes a lot of sense that like all of this data is just there and it's available. You can really hone in on who your perfect consumer and customer is. But as the consumer and customer, I just want it to be consent-based. If I want targeted advertising, I want to be able to say that I don't want to have to try to remove my data after the fact and be like, no, 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 give that back. I didn't give you permission in the first place. I understand the, the gains that are made for companies being more efficient with marketing because of it. I just want to be able to say yes up front. I think that's a very fair trade that you can have access to that data if I give it to you, but not otherwise. And then Harris saying, back around half a decade ago in 2021 had me doing a double take. No idea when it'll fully clear my head that 2021 isn't just like two, three years ago. And then a response being my man, I still think 2000, what was just a few years back? Getting ready for 2021 to be perpetually a few years back, even when it's over 20 years ago. That's why I say it. I have so much fun saying half a decade ago, over half a decade ago to refer to the time frame between 2019 and 2021 messes with people so much. Next Thursday is when the beginning of 2021 is half a decade ago, five years. It's awesome to say that. It's like the psychology of, you know, a quarter pounder. It sounds bigger than it actually is. I love it. And then EVP saying, oof, the only choking was Brett's closeout. Sometimes my mouth and brain disconnect and no no work good. And then we got Jandolf 67000 saying, isn't it always Lenovo that leaks stuff? Sort of. Lenovo, when they're leaking other people's stuff, very often are just putting like placeholders in, in different things. And it's not quite clear if it's true or if they're just got some technical marketing person that's guessing at different things. The most recent stuff with like the laptop things, it's been pretty well broadcasted what's going to be in there. So the leaks are more 
more reliable, but in other scenarios, it's not reliable in the slightest. But when it comes to their own stuff, like the expanding little things, the Legion Go 2 having Steam OS, that, that feels more reliable, but. And we got things for your head saying, geezer here, my Orchid Pro Designer 2 was over $500 in 1991. Now go ahead and adjust that for inflation. Not as bad as a 5090, but still. Never heard of the Orchid Pro Designer 2, but I did check it. It's about double. It's over double, at least according to the CPI inflation calculator. Obviously, CPI, the Consumer Purchasing Index, is not necessarily the best reliable indicator for calculating inflation, but it's the easiest website to access for it. So yeah, it's not quite as bad as a 5090. It is a 5080. And it looks like I could buy one of these bad boys for 120 bucks, as long as this is what you're talking about. What is that port? Oh, those are switches to the side of the VGA port. Oh, huh? what does that unlock? I don't want this thing, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess I used the word geezer in yesterday's episode of Hot News. There were several people who caught on to that. I don't remember doing it, but you live and you learn. Reese is having problems with his geezers right now, but th those are the, the hot water tanks. They call them geezers here. I probably didn't mean it like that. I probably meant it in the old person way. Uh, we'll see what, what I mean next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. See ya.